what's up guys if i'm back again with another video and this video is in response to a um, posting on one of these uh, excel groups on the facebook where this young lady had a question on how to go about finding the top five sales representatives in terms of sales so we uh, i had her send me the data that she was working with and i have her permission to share this on uh, on youtube so this is the data that she had sent me now this is the, the date on which the transaction took place the invoice the region sales rep customer item or product and this the, the sales in dollars now what she wanted was uh, to have the top five uh, you know representatives in terms of sales listed here and their respective sales amounts so we are going to be doing this in two different ways all right so let's get started what i'm going to do is i'm gonna i'm, I'm going to make sure that i leave this sheet the way it is i'm just going to make a duplicate of this sheet so i don't um, change this because i'll be using the same sheet again for a different method okay so I've, uh, let's uh, the first method i'm going to use is using the rank function in excel so i'm just going to um, change the name of the sheet called um, using oops using rank okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to insert a help column here and i'm going to call it rank okay and let's just record it on and the way the rank function works is uh, if I start typing here, you will see the number, reference, and order. Okay. Now, if you want descending, the order is zero. If you want ascending, the order is one. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here, type rank. And I'm going to be ranking this guy here, that is G2, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rank this number among all these sales numbers, okay? So I will highlight this whole row, okay? And now, Descending is zero, ascending is one. I want descending because I want the first one well, to be the, the highest sales should be the number one. The second highest should be number two. So I'm going to do it ascending and growth pencils. Now, since I'm going to be copying this and uh, this formula down, if I do that, uh, these references will also change. And I don't want I don't want those to change. So I'm going to highlight this and hit F4. Put the dollar signs in front so I lock those numbers down and hit enter. And this tells me this is rank number 10 in all the sales. And I just uh, move my, my mouse pointer to the edge here and turns into a, a cross here. And I double click and that pastes the formula down. Now you see this one here is number one in sales. That's number one. And this would be number two. And number three, number four, and number five. Okay. Now I've got these ranked. Now what? Now we're not done yet. What we need to do is now grab this information and populate this table here. Okay. So uh, the top sales would come here, and the respective sales reps name would come here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and put the ranks that I just used. Um, over here, so the, um, we're just doing the top five, so I've only put five, and I'll use these numbers when I'm uh, uh, moving here. Okay, now let's see. This would be now the reason why I'm putting this is now what I'll do is I will use a combination of the index function and the match function. Okay, and what I'll do is Using that, I'm going to find out what the top sales figure was for rank number one. So rank number one, 
top sales figure was 18,259. So I cannot do a VLOOKUP because if you remember, uh, I've shown this in a previous video that VLOOKUP only works to the right. So the column, index column is on the left and whatever you're looking for has to be sitting on the right. Now, using a combination of index and match, you can do a lookup that goes to the left as well. So that's why, uh, that, that's what we'll, we'll be using. And excuse me, let me just uh, mute my phone because it will just keep uh, beeping on us. Just give me a minute here. Sorry about that. Now, uh, so what I want to do is number one, go here and then look up this value and bring it here. Okay. So I'm going to use, like I said, a combination of index and match. I've done a video on this uh, already and it's on, on my channel. So I would request you guys to go and see that. But I'll, I'll just uh, quickly explain as I go along. So is going to be is equal to index now array what we are grabbing is this column here so just hit the on the top where you know if i click on the, the letter the whole column gets highlighted so i don't have to uh, mess around with putting numbers and then uh, if i if i were to do this then i would have to lock those down i don't want to mess with that i just do this and the whole column gets highlighted and that way I can copy paste the formula down and it wouldn't get messed up. Okay. So this is what I'm looking for. And then I'm going to match. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm going to match the, um, this value here. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm looking for this one in this column. Okay. I'll just click on here, comma, now less than exact match or greater than. I want an exact match. And close all the parentheses, hit enter, and that's your highest. That number one, that's 18259, 1859. I'll just move my mouse to the edge here, make it, you know how it turns the the the, the it turns into a, a cross here, and I just double click. And place the formula down. So number one ranked is eighteen thousand two fifty nine. Uh, number two is seventeen eight forty two to eight twenty four. Number three is seventeen seven seventy nine, and number four is seventeen seven seventy six, and number five is seventeen five twenty four. All right. Now, now what we need to do is we need to grab the sales rep name okay so we will just repeat this uh, same process again and this time instead of grabbing column g we will uh, grab column d okay match and i'm matching this against this column here comma exact match those are parentheses here and move my mouse, uh, my, make this the highlighted cell, move my uh, pointer to the edge so it come, turns into a cross here, double click, place the formula down. Now, let's check. Uh, number one, 18259 18, is agent number three. Number two, uh, 17824 is agent number 14. Number three is 779 is agent number 11. Uh, age number four is uh, 17776, which is agent number 12. And uh, number five, 17524, which is this guy here, agent 17, agent 17. So you see how we were able to uh, use the rank function to first rank this data as per the sales okay and then grab those the top five sales and their respective agents by putting this uh, creating a helper column here putting the numbers the way we want them and 
then we just use a, a combination of index and match to grab the sales figure to the left and here we grabbed the uh, agent name to the left using a combination of uh, index and match so that was uh, uh, one way to do this now uh, another way to do this would be uh, if you want to use pivot tables I personally am sort of like partial to pivot tables uh, pivot tables because you know, they give you a lot of uh, flexibility so let's uh, let me just copy this table uh, this sheet again and I'm going to use uh, Use, oops, using pivot. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to make this into a table. Okay. The way you, the reason why I'm doing making this into a table is that I would like to have the uh, pivot table auto adjust when we are adding more rows to it. Okay. I'll explain in a bit. So the way you convert this into a table is you click anywhere on this table here hold down the control key and hit T for Tom okay it gives you a prompt create table where is the data for your table it's in A1 through G19 and my table has headers so these would automatically become headers okay I click on OK and there you go now you see uh, it has formatted it, uh, the whole table for us alternate lines are shaded light blue uh, makes it easier to read uh, the filters automatically get uh, applied here and the first row automatically becomes the uh, the headers for these columns now uh, if you go to design tab and you click anywhere on this table it gives you what the table name is so ideally what I like to do is I like Excel by default just makes it table one, table two, table three. I I personally have a habit of renaming these once they are created and giving them a more name. So let's give it uh, sale, and you cannot uh, use spaces. Okay, sales underscore. Um, let's just say sales underscore figures. Okay, so. Now what we're going to do is we're going to insert a pivot table and for that I go to insert pivot table and I ask you what the range is now you notice how because this was we made this from, from uh, just from a like a, you know we made it into a into a table it automatically gives you the name of the table that we specified otherwise what would hap be happening is we would be highlighting the number of rows and let me just Cancel out of this here and let me show you something. Now, the reason why I did this, I, I, I mentioned this that I'm going to be creating, uh, converting this into a table is now, if you notice, um, <coughs> excuse me, this last cell has this blue, like a Tetris symbol kind of thing. Um, if you put your mouse, if you make this as your active cell and you hit tab, it inserts a row. Okay, I'm just going to control Z out of it and go back. Uh, the, the advantage is now if you if I did not make this into a table, if it was the day if it if this was still formatted the way it originally was, and if I was trying to insert a pivot tip a pivot table, I would have to highlight it like this. And what would happen is if another row was added, then I would have to go back and update the pivot tables uh, uh, data, data data range. You making it into a table automatically uh, does it for us okay so when I do click on uh, insert pivot table it instead of giving a range of a1 to uh, g19 it just says select table or range the table range is uh, sales figures you know the, the what we had you know, the name we had given to this table and Choose where you want this table to be uh, pivot table to be reported. It can be on the same sheet or it can be on a different sheet. It doesn't really matter. Uh, let's just do it on, on the same sheet. And so it's going to say where do you want it. Let's just stick it up here. Okay. And click on OK. Now this is going to uh, give you a, a you know a, a pick list 
to choose the fields. Now these headers have become fields here. Now the first thing that we want to do is we uh, the reason why we are doing a, a pivot table is because we want to have the pivot table order these automatically for us in terms of the highest sales. So I'm going to uh, put sales as the first. Uh, I click on here and Excel thinking because these are numbers, it probably thinks is values that, that need to be summed. It automatically by default puts it in, in this column here, the submission column. So I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it over here. All right. So if you notice how uh, it has by default has just put them in, in order. So I'm going to pull this down and say sort largest to smallest and it has done that for me. Okay. Now the second thing that we wanted to pull was the sales rep name. So I'm going to click on here and the sales rep comes down here. Now I'm uh, this the minus sign which, which allows you to click on it and collapse or expand. I don't want those anymore so I'm just going to uh, uh, you know deactivate this option I'm also going to go to into design and have the table show up in a tabular form okay and I do not want any sum totals and I do not want any grand totals okay there you have it so now all that's left is for me to pick up the top five so I go here is equal to Q2 and I drag this down. This is the top five, and I just copy and paste the same formula over here. Now, since I've moved to the right now, and these weren't blocked in, so Q2 becomes R2 because it has moved here. So the, the formula automatically adjusts. It Excel things that if you're moving across here, so it will also, you know, instead of referencing to this column, let me just close this. It will start referencing this column, so it kind of moves in, in you know, in sync. Uh, so uh, if you notice, <coughs> excuse me, 18 uh, 259, 18259, agent 3, 17824, agent 14, 17824, agent 14. I'm just going to do one more 17779, agent 11, 17779, agent 11. So this is where this is how you could use pivot tables to do this this stuff for you now uh, this is easy enough to do and this is easy enough to both both as you know very simple solutions now if you ask me my personal preference i would tend to use this option why uh reason is and i would also tend to not have this here either have it on a different sheet or have it way over to the right so it's not even visible now why i this is my favorite because uh, I've got this table and I can uh, just have it uh, you know when I hit uh, the tab key inserts on the line uh, makes me you know it makes it easier to read uh, the formatting is automatic and this pivot table automatically it's just accordingly uh, using the rank function here if you were to make a table the formula would pop uh, you know propagate downwards too uh, but uh, what this does is it relies on a helper column over here there is no helper column so your original data looks the same uh, you could argue that maybe this helper column could be moved you know over to the right where it's not visible you could do that so but like i said it's more of a personal preference my personal preference is pivot tables and um, that's what i would do all right um that's it for this video if you like this video please kindly give it a thumbs up and if you would like to see more videos like this, please subscribe. Thank you.